Well, uh, good morning. And um, the first thing I would like to introduce my uh, our project team, um, my colleagues from uh, Jane Goodall Institute in uh, Uganda, the developer team, uh, Touch Lab, a group in uh, in New York, um, and the Global Forest Watch uh, team. We have Rachel Peterson representing the uh, here with us as well. And of course, uh, a huge thanks for the Google, Google team helping us to develop this tool. So. Habitat loss and um, fragmentation is a major threat to chimpanzees. You can see, for example, a very important river and forest in Tanzania uh, being converted to agriculture as seen from a UAV image uh, collected with Serge this June. And obviously for us, Global Forest Watch platform is increase, it's very important because for the first time, we can look at the how chimpanzee habitats forest habitats are changing in Africa at the village scale and also at the chimpanzee range in the entire Africa. So we never had such a consistent source of information before. But in order for this information, to tr this data to truly be used in conservation uh, action, we need to make sure that it's reachable actually to the local stakeholders who on a daily basis make decisions. And um, this is a challenge because, as you know, most of the rural Africa still has issues with access to the internet, um, energy, uh, the computer literacy is quite low. So we also know that since 2009, with Google and other partners, which have been introducing and building their capacity and empowering them to patrol and monitoring their own forests, we know that it's working because, for example, this is the Kigali Village Forest Monitor patrolling his, his forest outside Gombe National Park in Tanzania. And if you look into his forest, which he has been monitoring, this is how it looked in 2005 uh, on Google Earth, and this is how it looks in 2013. So we felt that there is an opportunity here to, as we expand our mobile networks with our local partners in Africa, to add access to Global Forest Watch as one of those tools which will provide the, um, let's say, eyes from the sky and guide them um, in this forest where they can be more cost effective in finding ground truthing deforestation and do something about it. We also hope that that will transition from just documenting forest change to finding deforestation alerts, let's say, in the last month and actually stop it and do something about it instead of just converting it into simple statistics. We decided to focus on Uganda as our, um, to test the platform because Uganda covers a variety of different forest types and also it includes a variety of user groups. So we're working with 1,800 uh, private forest owners which are organized in a dozen of private forest associations as you can see uh, in this picture. We're also working with National Forest Authority rangers which have the mandate to ma manage and patrol the, all the forest reserves in Uganda and also with local communities which live outside those forest reserves. So this is how the, the app and beta version looks like. You can uh, record your username, uh, you, your organization, you can select your area of a concern, your village or protected area. And then you connect to your ODK form. And this is important because there is a variety of ways um, of collecting data and information needs. And we wanted to make sure that deforestation alerts are integrated into those uh, data collection and use cycles. So here's, for example, Bogoma Forest Reserve as one of the area of concerns. What you can do is set up your deforestation alerts. Um, uh, and, and also the time interval which you want to download the data. Once you do that, you wait to download these deforestation alerts and when you connect for the first time, it also downloads a series of base maps. Once you get your deforestation alerts, you can zoom into one and change the base map and then you can use that line tool to actually navigate to the deforestation alert. Once you get inside the center of the deforestation alert, and by the way, each square is 30 by 30 meter, um, you have basically open data kit uh, form pumps up and asks you to record if this is deforestation or not, and, 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 and whatever details. So here is some examples collected in October um, from our uh, user groups. Uh, here is, for example, the center of deforestation alerts in red. Um, this area basically has been um, a deforestation alert on Global Forest Watch platform. 
And then they went on the ground and used the app to find basically that this forest had been converted to farmland. The same thing in another spot. And again, this is basically a forests and deforestation, which the, in this case, private forest owner associations were not aware about. And they were able to be aware of it because of deforestation alerts, but also to find them in order to use this, this tool. By the way, the tool needs to be connected um, to download the alerts to the internet, but then after that, it works totally offline, including uh, with the uh, base maps. So some of the feedback which we're getting right now from the communities is that they all have been able to use and download the alerts and navigate to the alerts. It's, it's around like 90%. Um, and they find it to be potentially very useful for their workflow. So they see, for example, how they can help them um, find the alerts and follow up. And it's also how it can help the monitoring efforts to be more efficient instead of just randomly you know, wandering through the forest reserves. Um, we're very interested how this information, again, and data now empowered in the hands of local community makes it in, actually in improved conservation decisions. And you can see, for example, some of the feedback. You can see that there is potential to do that in the context of private forest associations, which they all sign that they will not cut the forest in return of some ecosystem services benefits. Um, but you can also see that in places like Uganda, uh, there is still fear of getting arrested. And uh, uh, basically, this is an important tool, we think, uh, to move the entire system forward, um, not only to empower them in terms of access to technology, but to also make another step towards the shift of the policies and actually the way how decisions are made and making that society more democratic, the way how information is collected, shared, used, and actually decisions are made for the benefits of the forest by diversity in people. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. So I have a question about for um, the local communities to report to, let's say, activities like illegal logging or burning and so on. Is there any way to keep this kind of reporting process anonymous or sending out information with encrypted messages to protect the identities of the informants? Absolutely. So um, I think the app, even though we're testing this app with three user groups, the potential use could be um, to anybody. So it's not just in Uganda. Uh, Global Forest Watch is global. So it has a huge potential, for example, for journalists or just uh, tourists to just download the app. We hope to be available early next year uh, from, the, um, uh, you know, from the App Store. But, but um, so it, you, it's your decision. If you want to put your name, you don't have to, uh, to use your real name. It's also um, the reporting can be done uh, not necessarily to, uh, let's say, the, the government agency, right? So you can, be, you can have your own aggregate uh, server just for your community. Uh, so this is definitely, we are, we're trying to design an app uh, for a variety of situations. And, and what you're describing is it's one of them, for sure. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, do you do any filtering for the Hansen data? Like, do you, do you show it just as it is? or do you use the the gain data to uh, filter any regrowth? Right. Uh, and the other question is, um, you mentioned um, base maps. Uh, what kind of base maps do you offer? Sure. So, so the um, Matt Hansen's data, uh, we're not we're only dis uh, downloading the deforestation alerts as presented at Global Forest Watch. So we're talking about at this point uh, two deforestation uh, uh, data sets. One uh, called Former. Uh, from MODIS at 500 meters. Uh, they deliver it every month. And another one is Matt Hansen's data at 30 meters. Uh, and that right now comes once a year, but hopefully it will be, the time interval will increase maybe to six months and maybe even near real time. So we're not actually downloading any other image pro processing uh, products like canopy, percent tree canopy and so on. We are looking just, um, we are exploring the potential for some applications in some area to make less conservative the algorithm in terms of predicting deforestation. Because the value here is not that 
I have a deforestation which is like 80% accurate that is deforestation. The value is that it brings me to an area which something might happening, right? So it, 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 it informs me. And the cost of getting to some of the areas is relatively small. So we are definitely look. Um, there is a, a potential to tweak and, and see what percentage you want to use. <clears throat> 